do you think it's a good idea if you're a player to sign a waiver to be able to play this upcoming season? No. And, and by the way, um, it depends what the waiver says, of course. If it's like a wrongful death waiver, look, there's, we're in a pandemic. And, and if they're providing adequate testing, et cetera, then in fact, you're probably safer playing the sport, at least in terms of catching the virus, than you are out in the world, right? Unless you're truly um, observing strict social distancing and taking real measures like that. But um, of course, there is some risk assumption to start up a business. What we see in this country right now is, again, powerful interests, um, moneyed interests, you know, captains of industry pushing through the media this message that the workers have to take risk. And then behind the scenes, trying to get things passed that means that they don't have to cover their workers, that the workers assume the liability. Well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. If you're running a business, then in fact, you assume the liability because the players are the ones taking the risk. So we see this, and, and of course, and, and this is what, how it works when they push the message through the media constantly is, is people start to think, oh, yeah, right, we're taking risks. Mr. So-and-so with the suit and tie, who's the billionaire, shouldn't be. How could, they, how could the business possibly survive if they had to assume liability? No, well, that's, that's kind of a philosophical point of debate in this country that, that you know, and, and, and it's been pointed out many times, that the that the kind of um, robber barons, for for you know, to use a term from a hundred years ago, love to privatize gain but socialize risks, and in this case, socializing risk means putting it on the workers themselves. No, I don't agree. I agree with it, and I agree with it because of what Austin Carr articulated. Obviously, the waiver, the the, the specifics matter. Or certainly you don't want to sit up there and just grant mm -hmm. complete immunity to the owners themselves if you're putting players at risk. We're, we're assuming that, that they're not going to try to get away with that or that if they did try, they wouldn't successfully get away with that. There are some risks if the laborers have to assume certain risks. Uh, the you know Team executives or team owners have to assume those risks to some degree anyway. But the reason why I side with Austin Kahn is what did he say? He talked about youth. And that's not to say, Max, that you know what? Because you're young, you can't acquire the coronavirus. You can't contract the coronavirus. We've learned that you don't have to be over 65. You can be under 65. Hell, you can be a baby and still, ca uh, still contract the virus. We understand that. And I would hope that everybody understands that Austin Carr recognizes that as well. But what he is saying is the vast majority of folks who are younger and are healthy are at less of a Respond risk. To a better, then yeah. you combine that with the fact that we're talking about the National Football League and the loads of money that they have available to them so these individuals can get tested easier than somebody, let's just say the average Joe out here, who doesn't have the National Football League as the backdrop to lean on, for example. So he's saying if I'm an NFL athlete, because of that, my youth, the kind of conditioning and health that I'm in, that puts me at a, less, or at a lesser risk than some of the other folks. Then the third issue comes into play, Max, which you religiously like to avoid, in my opinion, that I don't avoid. When you talk about these owners and the fact that they're going to get their money, so, you know, we want to privatize business, but we want to socialize other things. I get what you're saying. Here's the flip side. Um, should they be obligated to pay the players if there are no games, no practices, nothing going on? Because I would make an argument on behalf of the owners that they shouldn't be obligated to pay you if there are no games being played, even though it's because of a pandemic. If you're not generating revenue, why do you have to give out revenue? At least 100% of it. These are all things that are valid arguments and valid discussions to have. And if signing a waiver, although the fine language matters, making sure that either you protect yourself or that the risk is somewhat buffered by the risk on the part of the owners as well, I'm all for the players' willingness to sign that waiver. I see no problem with it. Yeah, I think that's the, the, the big thing is the language in the waiver. And also, I believe with anything 
that goes on with the NFL and the NFLPA, that waiver also needs to be collectively bargained. We need to see who is accepting what risk as we make a decision to come back and play football. But I do believe that if you decide to be a part of this game and the language of the waiver fits you, that you that you can sign it. I think that this should be something that each player gets to do individually as well. I think you get to make a decision on whether or not it is important enough for you to risk risk contracting the coronavirus, to risk bringing that home to your family. If it's that important to you for you to play, you need to understand and sign that waiver. But so much more goes into this than being young. So much more goes into this than being healthy. I think all of us have should at least start to realize that this thing doesn't discriminate. It, it's not about age as far as contracting it. It's not about age as far as who dies or who's on ventilators. And so this has to be approached in a smart way. And so in some of Austin Carr's comments, we need to not necessarily ignore them, but understand that all those things are one man's opinions. And so when you look at getting back into the NFL and getting back to playing games, all these players need to be extremely smart, but also diligent about the way that they study and understand the way that they need to conduct life, the way that they need to live off the field, the way that they need to train, the type of testing that needs to go on, because this is huge in the sense that once they decide to go back and play, they're going to continue playing. And if it's a superstar that contracts the virus, this is a coach that contracts the virus, football is going to continue. And that is also going to be a part of the waiver. And so it's not just, hey, man, I really want to get back to football and I really want to play. Let's sign whatever they put in front of me in order to do that. You need to be protected. Your family needs to be protected. But also the owners are going to have to be protected in a liability standpoint point as well. And so I think that this isn't just a cut and dry uh, black and white thing of as long as we want to play, we have to sign this waiver. They need to make sure the NFLPA has to be put on notice that this needs to be done in a way where players can play, be protected by the, by the guidelines and the restrictions and the rules that you have to go through to play, but also if you contract this virus. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.